Great to see you guys all. I miss you guys so much. Um, thank you so much for praying for, uh, for me, for Ethan, for my family, uh, especially last week. Um, yeah, as soon as we got back, uh, we found that Ethan had COVID and that I got sick and uh, it was a horrible, uh, rough week. But good thing for me was I lost 10 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> 10 pounds in five days, yay! Uh, no workout needed, I just rested in bed, groaning, moaning, and all that stuff, but I lost 10 pounds, and I got my jawline back, it's like, oh, what do I see? Welcome back! Um, and my, my app is flat, flatter, <laughs> not flat, but flatter, uh, but right now, like, I'm debating, okay, do I want to keep my jawline, or do I want to eat food? So there's a dilemma right there. Um, but thank you so much for, again, praying for me. My wife, Ellen, uh, she lost about eight pounds taking care of me and, and Ethan. Um, so, woohoo, for both of us, I guess. Um, yeah, um, but it's good to be back. Thank you so much for, Pastor Bar for filling in last, uh, last week. But how many of you love the, the message that she spoke? It was just perfect. It was just uh, really, really great. And it encouraged me so much personally um, because it just, um, it was one of the things that I was wrestling at the end of the break. I was, as I was panicking a little bit of what I was going to share is that because I had nothing. Um, And I was like, no, like, what what am I going to do? What am I going to share? Nothing's coming in. I am praying, but nothing's coming in and all that stuff. But in the midst of it, um, so, like, like um, your message on Gideon and just trusting and resting, uh, it, just, it was just absolutely powerful. Because that will give us the power to accelerate. Is that okay? Right? It will give us the, the power to accelerate. Um, before uh, we, we start, we're going to talk about purpose today. And for the next couple of weeks, we're going to unpack a little bit about, uh, about purpose. Um, but before we get to that... Here's a breakout question for us. What excites you the most uh, in your life right now, in your days right now? What excites you? What motivates you? What drives you? What, what keeps you on, on, on fire for, uh, for the things that is happening, things that God has put on your heart, or whatever it may be? Or maybe it's just uh, um, your, your work is going good, or your relationship, or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, uh, what excites you the most right now, and share with people next to you why. Is that okay? It might need uh, just a little bit of time to think, but that's okay. But um, let's take about like three, four minutes. Uh, but what I'm excited about and uh, what motivates me is, is to really, there's a, there's a fresh burning heart for, uh, for things that, God want, that I want to see um, God move in the city. You know, we've been praying for it, we've been contending for it, we've been prophesying for things, and I want—I feel like I want to, like, there's more of me, like, I want to see more, I want to see things happening. Um, so, uh, we're, we're always, we're always on that, on that, the line, that thin place uh, between what's going to come uh, and where we are, but we're praying for it, right? So, we're going to, pr- uh, for the next couple of weeks, it's, it's all going to tie together, but it's, uh, I want to I talk about purpose. As I was like wrestling, panicking a little bit about what I was going to talk about, um, God said, purpose. That word just came so clearly to me. Because um, as I was listening, I, I, I include this in the email, as I was listening to uh, Pastor Barb's message on rest uh, about a year ago, God clearly said, you need to learn to rest right now. Rest right now. It's, uh, take time to rest in me so that I can rest upon you, so that I can advance you, so that I can expand you. Rest so that I can rest upon you, so that I can advance you and expand you. And I was really happy and I was really thankful that our three-week uh, Sabbath month wasn't just about us taking a break. But there was a purpose behind it. 
There was a divine purpose that God was thinking, even before we put that into action, that God had in His mind, when you rest in me, I will rest upon you, I will advance you, and I will expand you. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's about anointing and acceleration, right? Um, the Spirit of God resting upon us through our rest in Him. Just like Gideon, right? Um, from last Sunday, Gideon rested in God, in the things that God was speaking. Of course, there was that conversation between Gideon and the angel of the Lord, saying, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. I need proof. And all that. But still, like, even in that, as he continuously had this encounter with God, he learned to rest in the things that God was declaring. And as he rested in God, and in his faithfulness, in his promises, in God's identity. And from that place, his trust was activated. And Gideon was empowered to do unimaginable things beyond his talents, beyond his skills, beyond his abilities. He was anointed, he accelerated, and ultimately, um, God's kingdom was expanded through his obedience. Right? And how many of us want to see that happening right now in us? Right, God, the Spirit of God resting upon us. And wherever we go, that there's an acceleration and expansion that we see. Whether it's your family, whether it's your work, your school, or wherever it may be. You go to cities and whatever, that you continuously see the, the things of, these, uh, of God happening in our lives. So, there's a purpose behind all of it. Because God does everything um, according to his purpose. Purpose, uh, the dictionary definition of purpose is this, the reason for which something exists or for, the re, uh, for which something is created for or to set as an aim, an intention, or goal for oneself. We all, bottom line is we all want to know what we are created for, right? We want to know our purpose. Rick Warren's book, The Purpose Driven Life. How many of you have read that? Right? All of, most of us. Um, it was published, says, in 2002. Um, and in six years, over 18 million copies were sold. In six years. You know what that means? People wanted to know their purpose in life. Right? And by 2020... They say more than six, uh, 60 million copies were sold in more than 85 languages. A lot of people read this book because they want to know their purpose in life, right? Because the bottom line is no one wants to just cruise through life. No one wants to just barely get by their life uh, or even, even just surviving through life until they, until they die. No one wants that. Nobody wants that. Um, everyone, in some ways, wants their lives to mean something. Their lives to make uh, some kind of uh, make a difference in some ways. And ultimately, for us believers, we want to um, to live our lives honoring the calling and the grace that God has placed upon our lives. That's the bottom line. We want to know our purpose. Rick Warren said in his book, Without a purpose, life is motion without meaning, activity without direction, events without reason. Without a purpose, life is trivial, petty, and pointless. And I think that's, a, that's an accurate assessment because um, without purpose, we often try to imitate someone's life. We try to chase after someone's Dreams and successes. Because we don't know our own purpose. We want someone else's purpose. And we often find ourselves more lost and confused and frustrated. I remember me growing, uh, growing up um, in, 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 in my teenage and um, I didn't know what I'm here for. Like, what am I going to do? Uh, why, am I, why am I here? Why am I on earth? You know, and I looked at 
a lot of different people and said, oh, that life looks amazing. Oh, this person's success looks amazing. And I was chasing, like, I, I want to be someone like this. I want to I have success like this. And, and ultimately, I wasn't happy because it wasn't mine. It was someone else's. And I felt lost. I felt frustrated until I met God or God came to me. And he unpacked the things that he was thinking over me. This is why I created you. And un- but until that time, I was frustrated. We have to understand that as much as knowing and understanding our purpose is, is, uh, is important, it is important for God. And actually, I believe it was more important for God for us to realize and understand our purpose. Because God has created each and every one of us with kingdom purpose that no one else can fulfill. And He desires us to see um, that fulfilled through our lives. Each and every one of us has unique kingdom purposes that no one else can fulfill. Amen? So, let's go to uh, Jeremiah 1. Um, it says this. I love this conversation between Jeremiah and, and God. Um, and actually, this is often what we, what we see in people. Um, when, when God shows up to someone that, who hasn't yet discovered their God purposes in life. Right? So it says this. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I did not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I'm only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down and to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. And everybody says, Amen. Again, we see this this pattern. Um, last week between God and, and uh, no, not God, uh, but between Gideon and the angel of the Lord, right? Um, but at the same time, we see Moses when, when, he, when God called him out of the burning bush. But also Abraham when he was barren, when, when, when he was old and was really old and Sarah was really old and the factory closed. And, but God said, you will be the father of many nations. And, and Abraham said, there's no way... Because we're old, and the list goes on. And Mary, like when, when the angel said, you will, you will bear a child. But said, no, I'm a virgin. And, and the list goes on. Right? All that. Um, God comes to ordinary people and reveals the grand, amazing, extravagant plans and purposes that he has for them. And people often respond from the place of inadequacy fear, right? Um, I remember when God called me into ministry and told me, I want you to serve me. I want you to serve a church. And I said, no, I don't want to. First thing is, I am not worthy. I can't, I can't, I can't do what my, pa- my, my college pastor, he was amazing. He had this beautiful, absolutely amazing singing voice. Every time he sings hymns and leads worship, he's we, I made fun of him because his, his hair was moving in such a way like, like he was wearing a wig, but it was a holy moment wig movement. But he was amazing. His teaching was absolutely powerful. He was charismatic. He was good at everything. And I, when God called me and I looked at my pastor, I said, there's a no way. I have this, I have this, I have this baggage. I, I love partying. Um, you know, all that stuff, I'm, I'm not worthy. That's often our response because we, we, we uh, respond to God from our place of inadequacy.
But there, God reminds us the un unchangeable truth, which is our purpose is not something that we need to strive for. Our purpose is not something that we need to work harder to be equipped with. But it is already in us when God created us. There's a divine kingdom purpose that is already in us when God created us. So it says this, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before God formed you in your mother's womb, God knew you. I remember when Ellen and I, I um, we found out that we were pregnant with Ellie. Um, and we went to uh, OBGYN and we got our first um, the picture, sonogram, ultrasound. All right? So here it is. This is four weeks old, right? Um, there is, I had, I had to point, I had to actually put the, the arrow there <laughs> and label it our baby. But it's only a dot. Can you see? First, when I first got that, it's like, what am I looking at? <laughs> right? But a dot in, a, in, in, in that picture. No face, no hands, nothing. A dot. A small dot. But it was the most beautiful dot I have ever seen in my life. Right? I'm looking at this small dot and my heart was filled with joy, with excitement, with dreams and, and everything. I started singing to it. I started speaking to it, saying hello to it. Um, one of those, you know, um, the funny voices that you make with, with babies, right? Um, I'm making, the, making sure that she understands that I'm the dad. When she was born, as I speak to her, that she would know, Daddy! doesn't happen but still like there's, there's a connection that I would I would hope to have right when she was born actually she didn't cry much and I called Ellie I'm here and she, and, and 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 she held my hand and someone just um, a doctor actually explained that it's not a it's not a, a real daddy daughter moment but it's actually a muscle spasm kind of thing it's completely ruined my moment. Uh, but for, for, for me to hope that I would, I would have a connection, right? But can you imagine how much more would God feel the weight toward us when he created us? If I was that excited, if I was that hopeful, if I was that like, um, crazy about that little dot, how much more would our heavenly Father was ex like was excited when He created when He formed us in our mother's womb, right? Psalm 130, 139 captures this beautifully, right? For you formed me, my inward parts; you knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works; my soul knows it. Very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depth of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I'm still with you. Right? Imagine what God was feeling when, when he was uh, thinking. Like what he was thinking when he formed you in your, in your mother's womb. The plans and purposes, the, the dreams that he has for you. The days that, the, the, all the days of our lives were, were already in, 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 in the book that God has written all of them, right? I knew you, God says. 
that God knows everything about you and I more than we know about ourselves. How many of you, that's a good thing? Because sometimes it's like, what the heck, you know, what, what am I doing? But God knows it already, right? God knows everything about you more than you know about yourself. God knows who you wanted, who, who He wanted you to be even before you were conceived. There's a comfort in that, right? God knows the divine purpose only you can fulfill. And He is absolutely thrilled to partner with you, speaking this, this truth over you over and over and over so that you can align with it, but at the same time, agree with it. There's a part, there's a two-part. You can align with it and still have doubt for it, but when you can align with it and agree with it and partner with it, there's a, there's a, there's a synergy that happens. When kingdom and earth comes together, when, you, when your life marries the, 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 the plans and purposes that God has for you, there's a synergy, there's an explosion, there's an anointing and acceleration and expansion for it, right? God is, is looking for that moment to partner with you, right? Every single day, God, in His absolute love and grace and faithfulness, He's speaking to your heart so that you can align with it, so that you can walk the purpose that God has created you for. How many of you know that that's an exciting day? Amen. Amen. Then he goes on and says this. Before you were born, I consecrated you and appointed you a prophet to the nations. One thing that we have to understand is that our purpose in God is always greater than than what this world offers. Always. How many of you um, heard the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Right? What, what do you want to be when you grow up? I got asked that question many times, and I always hated it. Um, no, I was okay when I was younger, but like starting junior high... I hated it because I didn't know. Um, but before it was like scientist, uh, policeman, or, or whatever, right? Um, I, don't, I don't think the question itself or the intention behind it is wrong, right? But can I suggest that this question actually limits our understanding or, or limits our capacity of what we are created for. Because often it talks about an occupation, a job, right? It's a noun that people are, are seeking. I want to be this, right? But when you think about that, you, you don't think about the purpose behind it. I heard someone says, our dreams, our purposes always needs to be a verb not a noun. And I think that's a brilliant way to put it. Um, it has to be a verb, not a noun. I want to be a doctor. Okay, what, what's the purpose behind that? I want to be a, a successful businessman. Okay, that's great, but what's the purpose behind that? Right? God has set you apart and called you for something bigger than a simple job or title or occupation in this world. Instead, our purpose is intricately uh, connected to our identity in God. To be God's voice, to be the representative of God's heart towards nations. So whatever you become, that's great. You want to become a successful businessman, you want to become a doctor, you want to become uh, whatever you want to be, that's great. Be that. But ultimately, when you are that, the purpose behind that is for you to be the voice and the, the representative of God's heart and the kingdom. So that the nations, the people, uh, or whatever, uh, that what's around you would know and encounter God through you. Does that make sense? Right? 
Our purpose is connected to your identity in God. Uh, our purpose in this life is always connected to something bigger than my own little life. But how many of us actually see our own little life and see everything through that lens? My, little, my own little life, my own success is, is the first and foremost, the most important thing. Everything else comes after. No, it has to be the other way, right? Everything else through the lens of love, th through the lens of uh, identity, through the lens of purpose, and you see everything else. That's when you see your life more clearly, Right? Without the purpose, everything becomes blur. But with purpose, you become focused. Right? In God's mind, each and every one of us is created with a purpose to touch cities, regions, and the nations. When we are focused on our lives, God is saying, no, look up and see the nation before you. See the city around you. See the neighborhood around you. See the people around you. That's what you are created for. To be my voice, to be my, heart, to be my ambassador. That's what you're created for. You're called to the nations. Amen? Tell people next to you, you're called to the nations. Tell people next to you. We are called to the nations. Our our little church right here, we're called to the nations, amen? Life as one is called to the city of Claremont, region, the Inland Empire region, and L.A., and bigger California, and to the nations, amen? We need to understand that. We need to have that perspective always as we do our worship, as we do everything that we do. We are called to the nations. How many of you are excited about being called to the nations? How many of you are a little overwhelmed that you are actually called to the nations? Right? Yes. Like I said in the beginning, when God comes to an ordinary people and reveals His heart, His plans, and His purposes for you, we get overwhelmed. Right? We get overwhelmed. Because we respond again from the place of inadequacy, from the place of right now, in the present. Right? That's why Jeremiah responded, I don't know how to speak, God, for I am only a youth. Right? And that was true. He was young. He was, um, he didn't have uh, uh, authority. To, to go before kings and, and kingdoms to prophesy. In that moment for Jeremiah, it was impossible for him to see himself in a place where God has called him to be. Right? The purpose that God reveals to you often sounds ridiculous and impossible. Like I said, when God called me into ministry, I... I there was no way that I, I saw myself standing before people and, and talk about it. It was like, what? Um, the assignments that God calls you to take always look so much bigger than what you are capable of in that moment. And that's why Gideon stopped the angel of the Lord saying, what do you mean, man of great valor? I'm the least in my father's house. My, my clan is the weakest out of all. What do you mean, the man of great valor? I'm, I'm, I'm beating the wheat right now. How am I going to save the nation? Right? Or Moses, when God called him to bring Israel out of the hands of Pharaoh, was like, what do, you, what do you mean go before Pharaoh? I, I ran away from Pharaoh, you remember? I don't want to go back because I'm, I'm going to die. No one's going to believe me. I can't speak. I'm slow of speech. I'm slow of tongue. I can't do... Send someone else, right? Right? 
But that's when God explains things to us. That's when God, God explains things um, to, to, um, to, to us. And he, he showers us with his promises. He showers us and reminding us of who he is for us, who he will always be faithfully in the journey that I'm about to take. Right? Again, Abraham, when God called him, he was wrestling with this, with this promise that God dumped on him. Father of many, I don't even know what that means, God. Father of many nations. I'm old. My wife is old. We're all wrinkly. And I can't, we can't do any of these. You know, I, child, a father of many nations. But it says, I, 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 spoke, I, I preached on this passage when he stepped out of his tent and stood under the stars. Something in him connected to the promise of God. And he praised God in that moment. Yes, yes, I will step into that purpose. In the moment right now, things might look impossible. But the things that God has for us in the future, it is possible. Because he's seeing it already. Right? So when Jeremiah said, I cannot do this because I'm only a youth. I love how God stopped him in the middle. If, he, if God didn't stop him, he would have gone on a little bit more about why he can't do these things. But God stopped him in the middle and he said, do not ever say, I am only a youth. Now my question to all of us, as we sometimes get overwhelmed with the calling and the assignment that God has for us, how many of us need to hear that voice of God stopping us to go on this, 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 this place where Jeremiah was, or where Abraham was, or where Moses was, right? A single ungodly belief can paralyze us to live our fullest purpose. And God says, stop. Again, at the end of the break, I was panicking. My thought went into a dark place to even to, the, to think that, oh, Steve and Barb made a mistake. Because I got, I got nothing right now. I don't know where we're going. I don't know what to do. Um, and I felt like God said, no, stop. Stop whining. Stop that. Um, I, I need that. I need to hear that voice. Because again, it goes back to my own little life. But God is saying, no, stop it. Put on a right lens. Put on a right perspective. See through what I'm seeing. Just come and rest in me. And see through what I'm seeing. And I'm glad that I did that. Um, so, we need to partner with God without purpose. Um, it says this. Right after God says, do not ever say, I'm only a youth. But after that, he says this, To all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. God did not baby him. God did not explain things. No, he said, obey me. Right? We must partner with our kingdom purposes, no matter how overwhelming that may be. We need to partner with that not with our understanding of it. Because how many of us need to understand something? Like God tells you to do something and, and you say, no, I, I want to understand. The truth is, you cannot understand. Our little minds cannot understand what God reveals to us. Or uh, analyze and as assess uh, if it is actually possible. Because we don't want to fail. We do not want to fail. Right? We are programmed by the society that failure is bad. It broke my heart when my kids went to junior high and their logo was failure is not an option. 
And I'm like, can I erase that a little? Because the pressure, like, I'm sure none of them would notice, none of them would care what the wall says, but the spirit, the failure is not an option. That's a, that's a, as a, as, 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 as one, you are, like if you are failing actually and see that, that's, that's like a bad day. <laughs> so we do not want to fail. So when God says something that we need to do, we assess, we analyze if we could actually make a successful, uh, bring a successful outcome. If we don't, if, we can, if we're not sure of it, we don't want to try it, Right? But when we are overwhelmed by our kingdom purposes, we need to partner with it through our obedience. It doesn't matter if you understand it or not. If, it doesn't matter if you feel like you're going to fail. Or not. It doesn't matter. Tell yourself, it doesn't matter. I need to tell myself, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what I'm thinking. What matters is God is asking you to obey. Because obedience allows us to step into the realm of God. Where God will show you who He is, and God will show you what He can do, and God will show you how faithful He will always be for you. And obedience activates our, our, our faith, our trust in Him. And it has nothing to do with us, but it has everything to do with God, because what we're seeing is all about Him, right? That's what, what God promised. Do not be afraid of them, for I am going to be with you, and I'm going to deliver you. I have put my words in your mouth. Right? That's, this is the same promise that God is speaking over us. The question is, will you, will you, are you going to wrestle with God until you understand, or are you going to let go and obey, even when you cannot understand things? We need to obey first. And I understand obedience is hard because we need to wrestle with our flesh. But it will open us up for the opportunity that we will never get to, to places that we will never uh, uh, permit it to go. But obedience will get us there. Obedience will, will allow us to accelerate and, 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 um, and ex- uh, uh, advance in ways that we can never do on our own. We have to understand that. And that's what is asking. That's what is calling us. In this season, we talked about four months, we talked about Joshua coming and the Israelites coming into the promised land. There were a lot of moments that they did not understand, but Joshua obeyed. We're coming into the promised land. We're coming into our inheritance. We're coming into a season that God has prepared for us. And I understand and I tell you, it will... It will uh, overwhelm us. Oh, it will overwhelm me. And I need a lot of prayers. It will overwhelm us to do the things that, that we cannot do. And there will time, and, and our excuse will be, we're small in numbers. Or we're small in, in our resources. We're, so, we're, we're this, we're that. We're. God is saying, will you obey? Will you obey? And I will expand things for you. Because the promise is what? The promise is God is with us. The presence is with us. The glory of God is here. Amen. Every time we gather, the glory of God, the presence of God falls upon us like the weight that we can. Because uh, it's too much. But that's. What, what brings us um, or, or what accelerates us in the world. I shared this um, in the back uh, with Carolyn and Bart. I had a dream. The, the day that I got sick, I had a dream. Um, and in the dream, I, I was here at church. Uh, we were preparing for service um, and there were people coming in new people, people that I have never seen. And this whole bunch of people came in and they started adding things to this place. They were raising pillars. They were painting. They were uh, like 
really like adding elements to this place and it was absolutely extravagant and glorious. It was wonderful. It was amazing. And actually, I came to them and I stopped them. I said, no, you don't have to do this. No, you don't have to add things. No, it's okay. You know, it's fine. And that actually rebuked me and said, we're not, we're doing, why are you stopping us? We came because the glory of God is here. We came because the presence of God is here. And we want to we pour out everything that we bring to the Lord. And I had to, in my dream, I repented. And I think Steve was there and he, he called me out. I was like, stop that. Um, yeah, uh, but again, it's when we think right now, yes, we are small in numbers, yes, we are small in structure, you know, or whatever. But can I say it's the glory of God that will give us acceleration and expansion in the coming season? Whatever you have right now, it's, it's not the end result. Whatever you have right now is in between result. And what you do right now, what you choose to do, will get you to that place where God is seeing, where God is calling. How many of you know that Life as One is called to do a great, amazing things in the kingdom of God? Again, it's not about us making our names, but it is about us seeing the kingdom of God expanding in the city of Claremont and the region. Amen? Wherever you are called, God has called you for nations. Amen? to represent his heart. So I want to bless you. I'm all going to end with this. I just want to declare this over us. And I, I ask you to respond, not with, but God, but yes, God. Is that okay? This is what God says, I said to Jeremiah. He says this, See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up, to break down, to destroy, to overthrow, and to build and to plant. This is the purpose for each and every one of us to break down and pluck up and destroy and overthrow anything that stands against the kingdom of God. Wherever you are, whoever you meet, as you stand in that presence in that moment, your job is to break down anything of the enemy and to build and to plant the kingdom of God. Amen? As a, a family, as a body of Christ, what God has called us, He has called us over nations and over kingdoms to build and to plant, to accelerate, to expand the kingdom of God in ways that we can ever not imagine or hope for, but it's going to be something that will be glorious because God will do it. Amen? Let's just respond to God with yes and amen. Say yes and amen, God. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that you have designed us for nations. You have designed us and programmed us and, and purposed us to reach out to, uh, to distance, Lord God. To nations and kingdoms and kings and queens, Lord God. To regions, Lord. To a uh, sphere of influence that we at this moment feel inadequate for. But you are called us to places and people groups to reach and to represent your kingdom, Lord. We ask you, Lord God, that you will empower us as we obey. You empower us. Pour your spirit over us, Lord God, that we will do unimaginable things, Lord. Because our own skills, our own knowledge, our own talents can only take us so far. But with your anointing, we can go in, 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 in distance that we can ever imagine, Lord. And Father God, it starts from this day, because this day you have set us apart, you have consecrated us, you have anointed us to, uh, to, to touch the nations. And we will see your kingdom being expanded.
people's heart being turned from the heart of stone to heart of flesh. And we will see the streets of our city being filled with praises and worship, Lord God. When we feel inadequate, when we feel underqualified, we ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, tell us to stop. Because we don't need to align with that. We must not align with the lies of the enemy, but we need to align and agree with the promises of God, with the identity that you have created us for. So Father God, speak to us. Stop. And let us stop it and change our gears and align and hear what you are saying to us, Lord God. As we unpack the purposes that you have for us in coming weeks, we ask you that you add more and more for us to take and to to bring it into our lives to change, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. In coming week, uh, in this week, actually, think about how you can live differently this week, what, what you learned today. Make a small changes, okay? Small changes. Small changes will get us to a big change, amen? So let's do that this week.